Let's see, reading on here, uh, Faye Shipley Weekly says, though you've probably gone over this a million times, well, hundreds of thousands of times anyway, Faye. I'd love to hear a layman's explanation of the Electoral College, why it is or isn't important, and how it affects the upcoming election. I find it truly hard to truly understand why my singular vote will really count, really won't count. Um, that's an excellent question. I did a, I did, I was on a show called Politichicks. I talked about the Electoral College. Uh, another great example of, of what happens when we conservatives remove ourselves from the culture. We let people say, you know, the Electoral College is some archaic throwback to, uh, you know, frontier times or our agricultural beginnings when it took three weeks for a guy to travel and, you know, present his vote. And, you know, you hear all these same kind of things that, you know, well, they didn't, the founders only approved muskets. They didn't approve automatic weapons, you know, this kind of nonsense. They, the founders approved the right to defend yourself. They didn't approve muskets. They didn't say um, the people shall have the right to bear muskets. They said people shall have the right to bear arms. They shall have the right to defend themselves. So the criticisms against the Electoral College are that it's archaic, that it's uh, a, a product of a time before instantaneous, instantaneous technology. They say it's anti-democratic because it deprives people's individual vote for president. They say it's anti-democratic. And this is where you're going to have to spend some time with people who have a problem with the Electoral College because when somebody says the Electoral College is anti-democratic, what you have to say to them is, you're damn right it's anti-democratic. You better believe it's anti-democratic. It's precisely what it is. The Electoral College is one of the many outgrowths of our constitutional dilemma. And the dilemma exists to this day. The dilemma never went away. The dilemma was the conflict between large populous states and smaller states, states with smaller populations, not land area. We'll talk about, when I say a big state, I'm talking about population now. When you get down to the Electoral College, the Electoral College is one of several compromises that were made in order to try and balance the needs of low population states against the legitimate concerns of high population states. One of the compromises built into the Constitution, before we talk about the Electoral College, just to give you some background, one of the compromises is the structure of our legislature. We have a bicameral legislature. We have two different legislatures. We have the House of Representatives, which favors large population states like California. It favors the disbursement of all of the people. In other words, it favors kind of the federal structure because California has 54 uh, congressmen, I think it is. It's a large number. And someplace like Wyoming or South Dakota has very few because there are a lot more people in California. So it's appropriate in one of the houses that California, because it has more people, throws more weight than South Dakota, let's say. That's not inappropriate. However, mm -hmm. In order to form this union, you had to get some protections in there for the low population states. Why would they join the union? What would be the advantage to them? If they're rural states, let's say, or maybe they're, maybe they're a southern state or whatever, if they're, if they're being outvoted all the time everywhere, why would they join? It doesn't make any sense. You're not going to join something where you're constantly being outvoted all the time. So what we did in terms of our legislator, le legislature was we decided to split it up. And we said we'll have to have the bills passed by two different legislatures, one which is representative among the people. The more people you have, the more people you can elect to the legislature per state. But one of them is going to be protecting the rights of the states and especially the low population states. So we have a House of Representatives where the number of representatives is determined by the population, but we also have a Senate where every single state gets two senators. A state with almost no people gets two senators, and California gets two senators. So that protects the smaller states. It gives them a chance. It gives them, it gives them some means of, of blocking legislation that they don't like or, or launching legislation that they do. And it's an ongoing common concern. So that's one way we deal with it. We deal with the population issue and the conflict and trying to get both big and small states into the union by saying we'll have two different legislatures, and they'll have to work it out between them. Works pretty well. We watered down this quite a lot with one of these amendments. I think it was the 16th Amendment because it used to be that you did not vote on senators. That was appropriate in my mind. It used to be that the states elected senators. Why is that important? Why would you, why would you say, well, we don't want the people to vote for senators? That seems anti-democratic to me. The great experiment in human history is the American experiment of diversifying power. Right? Power. 
is what's always determined human structures, and the United States of America is the first society to try to actively, intelligently, from the beginning, get-go, built into the foundation, died in the wool understanding of this problem, and how tyranny comes from the accumulation of power. So America was designed to divert and disperse power. So if you have a House of Representatives where the big states get all of the power, what you wanted in the Senate was you wanted a refuge of state power because the more power the states have, the less power the federal government has. Now, if the state legislature appoints a senator, if the state legislature says, we like Jim, and the people don't get to vote, then they know that by sending Jim to the Senate, Jim is beholden only to the state of North Dakota. That's or South Dakota is the example we've been using. He doesn't care about anything. He's just there to protect the rights of South Dakota. So when you have that kind of state sending a representative to the Senate, you strengthen the power of the states. And when they made that amendment to let the people vote for senators, you essentially reduce the Senate to kind of a weakened house. You still only get to send two, but you're kind of at the will of, of, the, of the mass of the country, of the, of the giant populace, rather than the protection of the power of the state. The ability for the states to have political power is what prevents us from having a federal dictatorship, which is why all of the problems that we seem to be having, going back to the Chick-fil-A thing, the gay marriage thing, with, you know, with abortion, gambling, all of these things are a result of us allowing the states to lose power. I got a little bandwidth warning here, which makes me unhappy. But we'll press on, and if we have to restart, we'll press on. Come on. This is so annoying, right in the middle of all this. Um, anyway, I'm going to assume that the recording is, is still holding on. So let's get back to the elect Electoral College. What the Electoral College does is the Electoral College means that the President of the United States of America cannot be elected by the cities. If the popular vote determined the presidential election, if the president was elected by a national popular vote, then the president would simply have to campaign in New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, Dallas, San Francisco. The president would simply have to campaign in just a few large cities and the urban populations and their needs would basically rule the country. So the purpose of the Electoral College is to make sure that the president, now listen, here's your, here's your, here's your thumbnail explanation, right? The purpose of the Electoral College is to make sure that the chief executive of the United States, the president of the United States, has to be appealing to the entire country. If you think about America, many people just think, oh, America is just a, it's just a nation. It's a, it's, a, it's a country. But it's not. America is, is five or six, if not 10 or 20 individual cultures that share a common government, but they're vastly different. The people who live in... in um, in French Louisiana, the Cajuns down there are totally different people than the Yankees up in Maine, and the, and the Midwestern dairy farmers are completely pe different people than the, than the people who live in the Southwest. America is a tremendously diverse nation, and what you want is you want a president who has to appeal to all of the not eliminated, dampened. They need to be harder to affect change. So. Um, one reason, one way you do that is divert power from the federal government out to the states and then down to the local level. And you try to make sure that the president has to appeal to more or less everybody. And uh, back to the republic issue, I, I had this thought, it was a shocking thought to me, it was actually almost like a lightning bolt for me, when I had the thought that if you lived in a perfect republic, if you lived in a republic where every single person's rights were absolutely manifest, jealously defended by a legal system that was strictly honest and, and, and ruthless about defending your rights. If you had a legal system that had all of your fundamental rights enshrined and a legal system to protect them, you would not need a democracy at all. If you had that system to start with, actually democracy would be bad for you because the only thing that could happen if all of your rights were protected is people could vote to weaken those protections. That's kind of where we are now, right? That's why we are conservatives. We think we've already passed the downside of that change hill. We think our rights and our freedoms are being eliminated by democracy. So yes, it's nice to have a representative who represents the general will of the people of that area. But 
the idea of just democracy is not is not good. And and I see a comment. Uh, I think it's uh, Ian McLaren says something that is really a great argument for minorities. By the way, because you hear a lot of minority people fall into this argument. You know, you, uh, a lot of inner city people have a problem with the electoral college. They like they like Barack Obama and so on. You need to tell them, uh, uh, Jason. If I didn't have your question listed, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to get to it. So I don't get all of them. Um, anyway, when you have uh, when you have a republic that protects rights, the people whose rights are most protected are minorities, right? The definition of democracy is is two wolves and a sheep voting on who's going to have dinner, uh, who's going to be for dinner, what's going to be. Sorry, I totally messed up that beautiful little aphorism. Definition of democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding on what's for dinner, right? A republic protects that. You don't want a democracy. If you don't have protections from a republic, then the minority gets outvoted every time. And a minority is what's protected by the Electoral College in the sense that it's a minority state. If you live in the state of South Dakota and you eliminate the Electoral College, the President of the United States will never have anything to do with South Dakota. They will not know what South Dakota is about. They won't care about its needs. They won't care about what goes on there. They just don't care because it's a few hundred thousand people, right? So the Electoral College is there to make sure that the various different cultures of America are all represented by the president. The president has to appeal to all of them. He can't just appeal to one group. He has to appeal to the whole. It makes the president go to places like South Dakota and listen to people because he needs electoral votes. So that's the short form on the Electoral College, I think.